Hello YouTube and welcome to otakuros.com. Today I review the Gundam Gushion, which is model number 8 in the high grade line for Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans. Gundam Gushion is rather interesting in that it's a rather large, almost overweight looking Gundam, something that we haven't really seen since Gundam 00, uh, Gundam Virtue, which is also a very large, shall we say fat looking Gundam. However, unlike Gundam Virtue, Gundam Gushion doesn't really have the characteristics of a Gundam. It doesn't have the uh, emblem on the uh, Gundam helmet. Gundam Gushion doesn't even really have a helmet at all. It's just a, a large round head. So it's kind of interesting to see this kind of design uh, for a Gundam. Unfortunately, when it comes to features for the Gundam Gushion, it's rather lacking. Yes, you do have this big, interesting design. But there aren't any features that go with the large design of the Gundam Gushon to make it feel special. On the front of the chest you have what look like a few cannon muzzles and around the legs you have some additional boosters. On the lower back of the Gundam you have a small latch to attach the submachine gun and on the back of the Gundam behind the neck you have another latch to attach the large hammer. You also have the large shoulder pads which have some pointed ends on them but aside from that they don't appear to have any function apart from just being shoulder pads. And finally, the weapons. You have the hammer, which, although large, is very basic. And you also have the submachine gun, which is also very basic. To be honest, I'm rather disappointed. You have this very interesting large Gundam, but there aren't any features that really support the reasoning for it to be large, aside from maybe just having lots and lots of armour. Hopefully we'll find out more in the next episode of Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans for the reasoning why Gundam Gushon is so big and large. But right now it feels like someone at Bandai saw some bomb defusal armour and decided that would be a really good idea for a Gundam design. Inside the box we have 5 plastic runners for your individual parts, as well as a PC runner and some shiny foil stickers. Unfortunately there are no decals with this particular build, and of course we also get the instruction booklets. So as always, feel free to pause the video here if you wish to have a longer look at the images. Gundam Gushion stands at 12cm and is 11cm from shoulder to shoulder. No stand is included with this model, but there is a female connector at the bottom of the waist unit if you wish to attach one of Bandai's action based stands. The model is capable of standing on its own relatively easily. For the most part, the components came together very well with Gundam Gushion. However, the shoulder components split away slightly when first inserting them into the arm male connectors. Also, the ball joints on pretty much every limb feel very weak and loose when moving the individual parts. The feet and leg components are quite solid, but the overbearing design of the bottom half of the legs mean the feet aren't able to rotate freely and hit the insides of the inner leg, which unfortunately limits the amount of rotation available on the ankles and ultimately the distance which the legs can be split apart if you want the model standing. The knee joint lacks range of movement and the leg to waist ball joint doesn't feel solid. There's no satisfying click sound letting you know the leg is well connected. The large size and armour design limits what can be done here with pretty much any movable joint or limb. The waist unit and chest unit offer very little as well. The chest unit is well made and feels strong, but rotation is limited due to the high height of the waist pads. Front and side pads can move slightly, but get in the way and fall off when rotating the chest unit of Gundam Gushion. There is also hardly any ab crunch at all. The back waist pad is fixed in position further limiting movement of the legs, but has a latch that flips out to hold the submachine gun. A closer look at the chest and we can see that the cockpit hatch protrudes slightly and we have what looks like a few cannon muzzles around the sides, though we haven't seen what they do yet in the anime series. There is no backpack on Gushion, but the back of the chest unit offers a few boosters and a latch that requires a small additional attachment to hold Gushion's hammer. The arms, much like the legs, suffer from the large design, which limits the range of motion possible with the arms. The large shoulder pads further limit the arm height achievable with the Gushion. You get a pair of closed fists to hold the weapons, and only one open left hand. Why Bandai decided not to give us an open right hand is a bit weird, and rather cheap of them to exclude it from the model. The head is a far departure from your normal Gundam head design. It's oval and very flat, and aesthetically, to me anyways, feels a bit reptilian for some reason.
much about Gundam Gushion that I like. I'm always supportive of Bandai to come up with new mecha designs, but Gundam Gushion is a far departure from the Gundam mobile suit formula we know and love. It really feels more like a future mechanised body armour for bomb defusal than it does a mobile suit, let alone a Gundam. I will say that I do like the cockpit protruding out slightly from the chest unit, and I am looking forward to seeing if those cannon muzzles on the chest do anything special, but that's really it for what I like about Gundam Gushion, which brings us to what I dislike. Gundam Gushion doesn't look like a Gundam. Its large design limits pretty much all the movement as a high grade model, and its weapons are basic and lack imagination, a big hammer and a submachine gun, as well as a few muzzles that we have yet to see be used. None of it is really exciting, and I know I've said this a couple times already, but it really does look like some bomb defusal body armour with a lizard head. Once seen cannot be unseen as they say. I really hope the next Gundam reveal in Iron Blooded Orphans is something a little more familiar, but also new. Gundam Gushion is definitely an interesting and arguably unique design for a Gundam to date. It just doesn't feel like it should have the name Gundam, partly because it doesn't look like a Gundam, but also because it feels very basic. As a high grade model, it lacks range of movement, limiting the poses you can achieve, and why did we only get one open hand? I'm personally not a fan. But I do hope Gundam Gushon has an ace up its sleeve, or some big reveal that will make me like it in the future episodes of Iron Blooded Orphans. Let me know your thoughts of Gundam Gushion in the comments section below. If you like the video, go on and hit that like button. It's like a motivate me button to review more Gundam models. Please consider subscribing for more Gundam content and other Japanese toys and anime memorabilia videos. Follow us on the social medias and check out our eBay store and website where you can purchase lots and lots of awesome stuff from Japan. Thanks for watching and see you soon.